Welcome back to the resupply with me, Guy Next Door. Me, DK. And me, Fan. Bringing you your weekly double tap of all things Space Marines and Laser Force. Uh, we're all back. We're all back and ready to talk some some Shit shiz. About yeah, 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 yeah. Um, look, we got a we got a guest this week, but before we get to him, um, you know, I want to put a, an obligatory um reminder to everyone who hasn't currently bought a plane ticket to Auckland. Um, maybe you want to maybe you want to get on that. <laughs> uh, Nationals is just around the corner, folks. Uh, it's only you know what ten months away. And, yeah, um, Jesus, don't say stuff like that. You're going to get my hopes up here. I'm dying, Steve. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm lucky because, you know, I, I at the moment we're playing like twice a week. <laughs> Eat the fattest of dicks. <laughs> um, no, no, not Eat quite that frequently. Dicks. But um, <laughs> we, did play, we did play three times in the last like 10 days. So I'm, I'm feeling... I'm feeling good about life. Um, yeah, but, well, and, and Than, you're about to play laser tag here this uh, week, and so is our guest because we got West Coast coming up here well true. before Auckland. So if you want to get your fix in <laughs> before that and you're not screwed out of attending St. George like I am, you so, can get down to St. George from uh, from uh, November 4th to 6th. Yeah, so that's like literally around the corner, like actually. So... Um, It'll probably be in the in the rear view by the time this podcast actually posts or going on concurrently. Uh, yeah. Possibly, we'll see. We'll see how how we'll um, see. onto it I am to like you know go ahead and actually get this cut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, without further ado, um, we'll get into it because we've got a little bit to talk about today. Um, this week we 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 bought him one of the new school. I guess he he would be classed as or one of the uh the guys who aren't currently in their 40s like everyone else on this call um oh. damn kids we won't get off my lawn <laughs> but um we'll uh, i'd like to welcome to the mic this week snowflake aka connor out of chula vista what's up man hello it's me snowflake what's up man how are you i'm, I'm doing great man how are you yeah not too bad we i, I haven't seen you since when did i see you last sacramento uh last year 17 Fuck. Oh my year. god! Jeez, let's look at this amateur. Yeah, rookie. <laughs> um, oh man, it's been a while. Like, uh, how you been? <laughs> I've been, I've been great. Yeah, I've been, I've been great. Have you been playing a little uh, bit? Well, a little bit here and there. Um, a college student, I work full time, so I get as many lasers in as I can. Unfortunately, it's probably not as much as I'd like. But <laughs> yeah, uh, well, get and in you guys also kind of dealt with a little bit of a loss down there in Chula Vista as well because Atlantis laser tag closed in this last year just like LTC right uh they did and actually um you guys kind of stole our thunder for that we were about <laughs> to make a big post about that like oh the gee day, so sorry the day no, after the day after, yeah. after we found out that you guys closed uh we, we had already knew we were closing for like two weeks and we already had like our big last hurrah and we were we weren't going to talk about it until a little later and like the day before we were going to start talking about it is when uh, LTC came out and posted it so uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit of tomfoolery there someone uh, yeah it's, well, it's if I had my way they'd both still be open so yeah, exactly me. there's nothing sadder than a uh, a closed laser force arena uh oh, except maybe famine that's up there Number two, closed laser force arenas. Um, <laughs> yeah, but on the ranking of first world problems, the closed laser force facility is right pretty much there. as bad as it gets. <laughs> um, but prior to, uh, I guess, take, take us back a little bit. We'll get to know you a little bit before we talk about the prison. Um, so obviously playing out of Chula, how, how long, when, when did you start up, Connor? When did you start playing? I, let's see, I'm 20 years old now. I started playing. <laughs> hang on, hang on, wait, 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 stop for a second. You're only twenty. Now, I, now, I, I turned twenty. Fuck. I turned twenty a month ago. <laughs> fuck me, running. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you've been Than, fucking <laughs> Than and DK have both been playing this? what longer than you've been born? <laughs> yes, probably, probably. Yes, correct. No, that's that, that's a hundred percent accurate because both of us started in '97. Crazy. You weren't even a glimmer in anybody's eye yet. <laughs> not, not at all. That's oh awesome. Oh my god! <laughs> I have no my bones scraping together during this conversation. <laughs> oh. Um. So now we've de- we've highly depressed. You know, Than and DK. I'm I'm all right. Like at least you were born when I started playing. Just. <laughs> 
um but yeah so okay so uh you're 20 now when did you when did you start i i started playing laser tag um for fun when i was i think in second grade so i don't know what's that like eight years old right uh, oh, that's at, at Atlantis Laser Tag, <laughs> something like that. Eight or nine years old. Yeah. Because they opened in 2007, I believe. So yeah, that sounds about right. Right. So around eight or nine years old, I started. I went to their members' night. They, you know, they talked to me. They're saying, "Hey, you know, you come come to Laser Tag a lot. Come to a members' night." And when I was in like third grade or second grade, I just got absolutely shit on. So I was like, "This is <laughs> stupid. I'm just gonna go back to public games." Yeah, so sounds about I stopped right. playing. Uh, stopped playing members' nights and just started playing public games again until I want to say. 2012 was when my membership, my 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 current membership, got you know opened and activated, and that's when I started playing consistently. So 2012 was when I started playing laser tag at uh, Chula Vista. Right. Um, and what what sort of got you in? Like, were you, were you going with like with somebody like a, a sibling or a mate or? I uh, I just started playing um, just randomly because I I knew I used to go there in the past and then started just deciding to go again, and I saw that one night I was there on a Saturday and I saw that the members these these almighty beings that are gods <laughs> at laser tag were playing on a Saturday night from five to nine, and uh, I decided I wanted to go try it because I saw some people my age, and some people that were much older than me, mm. but I saw. Some, some people that were my age that were into it. So that was like the, the big thing that brought me in. Uh, and then, so playing since 2012, uh, yeah, SM5, you know, member games, and then actually taking the game, you know, serious, wanting to get a lot better, was, when was San Marcos, 2016? That yeah, that was early 2016. Yeah. So, so, 20, so then 2015, because uh, San Marcos had asked us to uh, uh, help them practice for level in 2015. So that's when we started kind of playing by some tournament rules. We didn't really know what they were exactly. We had like a couple players that uh, that knew how to play by those rules. Uh, what was it? Killjoy might have been his name, Mike. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, Coyote, those players that had played in tournaments um, kind of were trying to show us the ropes, but we um, weren't really grasping it that well. And then San Marcos, uh, the West Coast tournaments, tournament was announced, so we started practicing for that. We had like 16 players or something like that that showed interest wow. um, for that tournament. And so we were practicing with not a full understanding of the rules because a lot of us were still using our old hand grips mm. where we put our hands over the gun entirely. That and um, zone style of play. Crazy as exactly. hand grips. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, the players like um, Silver in, Killjoy, Coyote, uh, those children how to play. So everyone just kind of adapted to their play style. Yeah, and I suppose like I suppose in that instance, like you you lean on, you know, you lean on your vets, right? Like the guys who have been around for a while. Like those are the names that like I recognize. Um, oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was from you know 2010 when when we came over and played and and met sort of uh, True La Vista at the one and only internationals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They. Um... At the time, the mentality was, you know, uh, play by our rules, and then if you don't like it, don't come, I guess. And yeah. um, after that, we uh, didn't want to adapt to the rules because some some players have the logic of that it's unnecessary to have to show two sensors and all of that. So for a while, uh, Chula players were standoffish um, to the idea of tournaments. And uh, it's either that or some people just didn't want to. You know, yeah. um, also after back then I was in like, back then I was in like seventh grade when I like started playing a lot in like 2012. So traveling was not an option for me, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, I've played in three tournaments, I played in, uh, West coast and Marcos, West coast in Sacramento and nationals in Sacramento. Right. Um, and did, cause I can't, I can't remember. Did you guys send a team or were you murking? Um, I remember Kodama and Applesauce came up as well for for, for Zach. For Nats, yeah. yeah. So we sent a team of four. It was um, uh, what's his? I don't Nolan. know. For the week, yeah, Nolan. It was. I don't, oh, I don't know yeah, what his no. name is now. Nolan, um, myself, Kodama, and his sister yeah. Applesauce. Uh, we were the four Chula players that were able to go. Yeah. And um, we 
brought on Starkiller from Sacramento and Redneck Tech that. as our as our players. Uh, kind of funny. We went into that tournament with the mentality of Nolan playing Commander and myself playing Heavy mm. with Cayman and his sister. I think we're gonna play Scouts or maybe his sister would play Resupply. Mm. But uh, the Resupply or excuse me, the mercenaries we got um, were more suited to playing Scouts. Yeah, and so we put uh, Nolan as three hit or excuse me, Nolan as uh, ammo, and Kamen Kodama as a uh, commander, and he really stepped up because that was kind of before he peaked and got uh, much better at the game. Right. So he, he filled some big shoes there and helped out a lot by playing commander. That that seemingly was kind of his his um, jumping off point, right? Because every time I've seen him play in a tournament after that, well, even at that tournament, he played really well, but each tournament that I see him play at, um, he gets you know better and better to the point where he's you know proper nats player now <laughs> oh yeah yeah no he is i uh, i think he is all around the best player at our site now right out of out of chula vista and even if you now that chula vista is closed if you'd consider a san marcos player, i still think he's the, the best one there because of uh there's they, san marcos has some players that are very good at scoring points but um being you know well knowledge about the rules and versatility and positions trumps any you know scoring 15k points in a game if you're the rest of your team dies you know <laughs> sure so so you guys those of you who are still playing are, are mostly making the trek up to san marcos now so there's kind of a southern california union team now i guess huh <laughs> yeah so um san marcos from depending on where you live in san diego is about 40 minutes it's like it's 40 minutes to an hour so it's not too bad right um I would definitely drive an hour to get to lasers. <laughs> right. No right. questions asked. Where's your closest one, Dika? Uh, like two? Yeah, that would be it, probably. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> if right. I wanted to actually play Space Marines, that would be, be about my closest one. Brutal. So what? And that's, that's a good, like you know, three? 10 hours from here. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I got, I got my distances all messed up. Apparently, my geography in the States is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody assumes, like, it's California. So, you got, like, San Francisco, and then Los Angeles is, like, two hours south. And that's pretty much it for the state, right? Yeah, that's right. Isn't that how it works? <laughs> totally. Completely, completely not how it works in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. Good effort. Uh, isn't California, like, <laughs> the same length as my country? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. You're basically your your pretty sure your entire country, North and South <laughs> Island, fits inside of Cali. That's amazing. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you Ooh, know, I get almost sexual there. That's right. Yeah. So, um, okay. So you you guys are commuting. Like, do you guys go as a crew or? Uh, it depends. So myself, I haven't been able to go in a couple of months because of my work schedule. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, generally a. Uh, Three, at least three of us will go in a car together. Three to five. I mean, it makes sense, travel up right? To like, go up, yeah. And oh yeah, how often are you guys traveling? Uh, up to San Marcos? Yeah. Uh, every weekend, there's two oh. list of players going up there. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. Why do they do they run like a social night or a members night or something on? on yeah, they Saturday? have their they have their members night. Oh yeah, sweet. On. Um, I have good deal. Night so, so on a weekend. Cool. Yeah. That's, okay. uh, that's yeah. interesting that's a throwback right <laughs> didn't you yeah, wait that's... chula vista had theirs on a saturday right it was saturdays uh san marcos the reason they do it on sundays is because i think they close at like seven or eight and their their members night starts at six and they let it okay, go past that's not, gotcha. chill. that makes sense it, because, because when you say weekend to me in in context of a laser tag facility for for me that that i i always assume basically like friday saturday mm. as the weekend for a laser tag facility um it's their weekend so, right like they're busy days. yeah yeah so you know if it's but you know a members night being on a su sunday evening it's like okay that that actually makes a certain amount of sense because generally regular business kind of falls off a cliff after you know like four or five p.m mm. So it's that makes sense. Why we do our like periodically we we play as I said we play twice a week, and um we'll play like a uh, our like Space Marines um training night on a Sunday night. Um, yep, I yeah. remember that. Yeah, so we've we've started doing that again. <laughs> We're on prep. We're in preparations. Shit's gonna get real for next year. 
Um, if you bring up you playing twice a week again, I swear to God, I'm going to storm off of this goddamn podcast. <laughs> oh, That's DK's a lie, and you know it. <laughs> um, Here, I think you guys should be prepared because there's going to be uh, at least half a Chula team going to Auckland. Really? Hey, That's, there we yeah. go. That's music to my ears because um, – Yes, there is. The, the, I, I hear a lot of rumors about teams that are coming uh, or people that are keen to come, but, you know um, – so if I would I would love to get two teams out of the states um three would be amazing and I hear you know with the amount of people that have said look I'm keen to come there's enough for four so you know stranger things that happen that would be I pretty think amazing. three is a realistic expectation yeah for people that are from the states yeah although although until people start by buying tickets like I'm I'm super skeptical until <laughs> until the money starts being lit laid out and people start going yep i've thrown down my you know however many hundreds to you know mid thousands of dollars <laughs> worth of worth of full plane tickets until that point i'm skeptical because that's me yeah. that is, that is my role on this podcast is to be super skeptical and um bring the mood down know, we know we get it and, yeah exactly <laughs> somebody has to may as well be me that's right um yeah. but again you guys are jumping the gun getting all the way to auckland Snowflake, why don't you tell us about who you guys are, are sending to West Coast? Uh, yeah, so going up to West Coast, uh, we actually leave tomorrow, which is going to be the 31st from when this is recorded. Uh, we leave tomorrow. We're bringing myself, Kodama, his sister, uh, Applesauce, uh, Dylan, the very, very tall boy. Uh, I, I don't know what his last code name was. Maybe like it was like the god or something. It used to be yeah. the god. I know not really that much. stupid like that. Um, <laughs> It was terrible. <laughs> uh, Dylan and another player named Zev. Uh, Zev is that, it's, that's his first name. Uh, I think his code name is Soy Boy or something like that. He uh, Dylan's yeah. gonna have potential issues with that code name in St. George. <laughs> uh, so we we talked about that and he's changed it and knows and he knows that he's not using that code name. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, like, like, so 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 dead serious off ramp like the, the first West Coast well the, the previous West Coast that we had in St. George, like um, we had some some very, very strict language rules. Like we could like even God damn it was considered illegal language. Which well, yeah, yeah, like yeah. every every single tournament that I've played that that's come up partially because I bring it up at every single tournament. <laughs> um I'm not I'm not, mouth, <laughs> I'm not religious at all, but I like to know what my rules are and what I can and can't do, like throw cheers. Um but <laughs> that <laughs> apparently is is just fine. <laughs> Look, it, it was a misunderstanding. Especially when I'm two K catches them. It, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I was just I was giving him a cheer. He looked tired. Anyway, um, so <laughs> just testing its durability. <laughs> every single tournament I play, that that very thing comes up, and every time it's well, look, should it be included as a legal language? Shouldn't it? And I guess it comes down to like if if it's if it's offensive, which in some cases it is, it is which if you're hold, holding a tournament in Utah, you know it's guaranteed that it is. <laughs> Yeah. Um, when in Rome, do as the Romans. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I can I can understand that, especially especially in Utah. Uh, in any case, okay, that accounts for four players. And then who uh, we got? You said Zev is the the fifth. Zev, and what about the yeah. sixth player? Uh, we are bringing Sergeant Tucker on our team. Oh, cool. Oh, right, right. Oh, so mate. this is this is uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and um, say that I think this is one of the better Chula Vista teams, if not the best one ever sent to a tournament. Now, are you guys still considered a Chula Vista team if Chula Vista doesn't have a site? Or, or uh, are you now repping so San Marcos? We're not repping San Marcos. I think we are uh, rep uh, representing the Rest in Peace Chula Vista site. <laughs> uh, I so am officially dubbing your team Marco Vista. Marco Vista. Uh, <laughs> San Vista. No. No, Marco Vista sounds better. Okay. Well... It's done. It's in the books. Get used to it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, how does that work? Would that be that's a maybe a good question for maybe some newer players wondering um, how does that work? So the so as far as the eligibility requirements for so the sites go, and and honestly, at this point we're probably due 
to look at this because when the eligibility requirements were originally written, um, there were a lot less sites in play um, because the the eligibility rules go back into like the mid late 90s from from Australia. Like we we just pulled their eligibility rules across, um, and by by the letter of of the law, um, which is you know sometimes upheld more in ignoring it than actually upholding it. Um, to represent a site at a national t tournament or, or in, inner center tournament, you have to either have your greatest number of games played at that site, you know, or you have to have previously represented that site in an inner center competition. And, and there's there's a third one that I'm not remembering at the, the moment. Oh, and I think it's your closest geographic one. You've been yeah. there for, for six plus months. Yeah. So it, it, it basically that 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 rule w w was put in because apparently there was an issue with you know somebody li literally moved within you know a very short span was of time. Was it rusty? To Nats. No, no. This 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 was actually this was actually pre rusty. Oh. Um, the um, ancient times. Yeah, the ancient, the, the ancient times. <laughs> Truly uh, ancient times. Uh, yeah. So somebody had moved and was able to, you know, it's like, well, hey, this is the site I'm closest to now, so ha ha ha. Um, and so they added the um, the time, the, the length of time living closest to to that site. Mm. Um, but the but you know the the, the, the previously represented a site at in, inner set, center level, I mean that starts leading to its own loopholes because I mean it means that you know it's a, it's how I've you know it's kind of slid between teams over the years because <laughs> I've got Sacramento eligibility and Auckland eligibility yeah um, and so and so the the reality is that there, there, there is probably some some closing of um, those type of loopholes that, that we really should probably do at some point, especially with all the new sites coming online, you know, it might be worth, you know, having a, having a clean slate with that. But Well, technically speaking, we have updated things a little bit because the, the carve out for that is initially the idea was, is that if there is a unanimous vote among committee, they can remove eligibility requirements for somebody who, who wants or needs to play for their team. And thus far, the committee has been fairly good about just understanding accommodations for people who have recently moved or people who are kind of playing for another team as a one-off or kind of fiddling around with Merck requirements or expanding eligibility to apply to an entire country versus a site. And we've done that on just kind of a tournament by tournament basis. Mm. We did vote to make a change rather than having it be a unanimous vote by the committee to have it be a two thirds vote instead of the last couple of years, just because there is going to be an increasing number of sites and anybody who served on any kind of large body knows it's probably better that you don't give kind of one person the ability to just kind of veto and hold up anything they want. Yeah. So provided there's kind of a broad consensus, we can sort of make other arrangements for, for teams. Because obviously there do have to be allowances that are made, especially for international travel and things like that. But I think in general, the kind of idea is, look, we're trying to foster teams building from the ground up. So you play with people from your home site and give people from your home site a chance to compete without people forming all these super teams who are just going around and, and stomping everybody. Mm. Yeah, um, the whole because the whole the whole super team thing, um, you know, try the tr trying to 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 avoid that, um, is something that you know we've kind of taken out of watching some of the other um, scenes r rise and fall over o over the years. Like going again, going back to to the a ancient times, um, Qzar, um for now, now, children, for, for for those of you who don't know what Qzar is, Qzar was ask Redneck Tech. He'll explain yeah, it. Yeah, ask Redneck Tech. But it, Qzar was one, was one of the original laser tag systems after the Granddaddy, which was Photon. Um, Weren't and, the rules for those on uh, carved into the Old Testament? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and they pretty much started with a you know you know site pure teams for for, for tournaments. And then they gradually started allowing 
non-site pure teams, allowing just people to just make teams from where, wherever, wherever and whenever, and that started leading to super teams forming, and you know just getting into these rolling patterns of okay, well only the super teams were were showing up, so you weren't getting the the new blood through the sites to try to you know increase the player base and. Now, granted, there there were some other things that happened that also contributed to their to to, to the you know overall downfall of of their scene, but um, you know that was definitely one of the pieces that um, didn't help things. So, and and I know some people li- listening to this are going to be kind of going, but wait a minute, there have been you know super teams have formed you know within laser force at tournaments before on certain things like we're not perfect but it, as a general rule like when stuff like that has happened it's been it's been international tra- travel teams mm. and th- and things like that it, it hasn't it hasn't been like oh hey here's this tournament in sacramento and we're going to form this team of you know two sacramento people two st george people and two detroit people and do that to roll everybody yeah, so. yeah. It's for for my mind. It's yeah. You, you're right. It's there to build up the the local site and also to to kind of protect, um, I guess the scene from itself, right? Like, um, to a certain extent, yeah. Because we 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 did see. <laughs> turns out it was apparently a hoax, but some stuff crept up just before Detroit Nationals last year with with um somebody trying to to you know form a team with a bunch of other guys from different sites and it almost you know it 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 almost kind of ripped a couple of teams apart so um if you can kind of avoid that happening um to me it's a good good thing but we we can i think we can like do a whole podcast on like (laughs) eligibility stuff just because i've i've had i've actually had many uh i had a, a quite a large discussion with this um uh, on this topic with um, Stryker uh, and Al out of Brisbane last year, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and um, Stryker had some some things to say, so maybe we'll talk to him about it. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. I'm already previewing another episode. <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta let him know now. Um, so, um, right. So you guys, uh, you guys are sending, you know, arguably the strongest Chula team. Um, uh, I I don't know. I think the the one that hosted, um, you know, Chula Nets was was pretty good. But again, we we played under a, you know, a different, a rules. different uh, let's just say different set of rules. <laughs> it was a different uh, era. It was a different, yeah. era. It was a different yeah. era. I mean, Nolan still plays. He's not Nolan coming to this tournament, but you no, know, he's uh, he's away at college in DC right now. Yeah, but he could uh, play. So. He could. He still does. He um, played not too long ago. Right. That's what I'm saying. But Last he's really exactly. the only kind of person from that team who's really still around and has played at all in recent tournaments. Mm. Right. Right. Um. So yeah, I mean, so yeah, it, it kind of. Um. But you know, if if it is as strong as you say it is, and I look forward to kind of watching some of the games. Do, do you guys know if they're going to stream any of the games from West Coast? I have no idea. Um, I haven't asked Brandon about that. Mm. Video um, or it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's true. Um, honestly, with 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 how bad I think we're we're, we're going to get rolled, I'm not sure I want video evidence of that. <laughs> um, but you know, by the by the same token, you know, we do have that German team coming, so it's like. Ah, uh, we probably need to be streaming that, even you know, even though it's going to be super embarrassing for, for, for Sacramento. Okay, for a second there, I was like, yeah. oh, we got a German <laughs> like, team wow, coming, so we'll at least be able to beat them." And I was like, oh, <laughs> "He's already really coming out here strong." <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, which would have led me to to saying, "I hope they just shit stomp everyone," but you know. <laughs> I hope I, I hope they have some secret style of playing that none of us have ever experienced before that only they only they know and they just roll everyone. La- laser force, yeah. true laser force gods. <laughs> but I mean, legit excited to see people who have not really played in our tournament scene and what they are going to bring to the table because it's very possible they will bring up something that's brand new that we really haven't seen or considered before. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to that at least 
kind of vicariously since again I won't be able to make it. I but hate you. I'll, we'll we'll let we'll let you uh, talk the the shit here, Snowflake. Where uh, where are you guys hoping to finish in this tournament? Ah uh, well, putting you on the spot. Uh, Come on. Yeah. So we are we are obviously everyone's hoping for first, but we are actually hoping for second. That is our that is our. Uh, Honestly, given that there's only four, four that teams, is, that's, that's fairly reasonable. Yeah, as as everyone may recall, I made a bold statement one time in uh, West Coast 3 in San Marcos that a Chula team will never get last, and I will never be a part of a Chula team that uh, will get last, and that statement is still true. I have <laughs> the three tournaments I have played. We have gotten second to last and third to last. Never last. Uh, okay, there you I'm go. Bold prediction that. here, ladies and gentlemen. Chula Vista. That. Shooting for second in this tournament. Watch out. Yeah. I'm sorry, Marco Vista. Shooting for second in this tournament. Uh, so, so actually, one of our players, uh, Dylan, uh, formerly the God, uh, he. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people think he's a San Marcos player because he played with them in Loveland and at San Marcos. But he actually started laser tag at, uh, at Atlantis in Chula Vista. He used to live just a block away from laser tag. Right. Uh, from from Chula, and so that's where he. Uh, used to primarily play, and that's where he formed his play style of I'm taller than everyone else, and I'll just farm points. <laughs> Shoot over the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's where he kind of formed that play style. Yeah. yeah sometimes, legally. Yeah. So, <laughs> I remember and, um, Tank was just, he just, yeah, anyway. Uh... <laughs> yeah, oh. Especially in, in Chula, if you're over 6'2", then you have a, a massive advantage in Chula. There was a, Rest in peace. a really big dude who played out of there who i can't remember his name tiny well maybe? there was there was tank and tiny yeah. for saint george yeah, yeah. who were that oh they played Gibby was george. real good about getting around the wall yeah. rather than over the walls and then you had baden and to a lesser extent rusty who could also do that but rusty wanted to go in and crash the the recep so it was a lot of just tall motherfuckers <laughs> shooting over walls in that 2010 tournament the right. most miserable fucking week of my life <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 really really glad in in hindsight that um I had started a new position at work like literally like a month before that tournament. So, yeah, sorry guys, I can't I can't go. I got I got work and then after hearing everybody's um experiences it was i was i was not happy or i'm not unhappy to miss the week i got kiwi I think, yeah was, yeah steve got kiwi aids without without travel insurance yeah there like there were idea. good things that came out of that tournament though because it did get several of the east coast players more involved it did encourage some players on the west coast primarily thunder to get deeper into the tournament scene and it was because of some of the frustrations that week that um, Sanch kind of took the lead and was like, yeah, next year, let's play international roles in Syracuse. So if not for that, we might not have really developed the tournament scene back to its full kind of potential in the in the U.S. So at least be thankful for that. Yeah, so, 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 so I guess in 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 hindsight, um, it was it was a a positive week for the long term. But yeah, just just from what everybody was saying after that that week was done it was just like uh yeah no i'm i'm not unhappy to to, to have missed missed that frustration we got to meet some pretty cool people though like uh guys that we've only seen well that i've only seen you know that that one week and never again since um but you know <laughs> still still remember and still miss um shout out to cody and ejs miss you guys um <laughs> But, um, yeah, so, I mean, it should be, a like, it sounds like it's going to be a fun tournament this weekend, like, uh, and, yeah, like, hopefully it's a, a good sort of um, practice, I guess, for next year. <laughs> yeah, from what I've heard, from what I've heard, yes, uh, <laughs> San, uh, San Marcos and St. George play somewhat similarly in the sense of it's a very dogfighty type arena, it kind of either don't stop moving or... Or uh, they're similar to each other in that way, from what I've heard. Mm. It I've plays never played fast it in St. George. It plays fast. I would still think that they play rather differently, just based on my experience having played the two. Um, now, I do like a lot of the changes that St. George made since we had the tournament there, West Coast 2, in 2010, where I thought there were some 
kind of flawed things about the way their field played, but they adopted, they kind of adapted and altered a few things about the, the field there. Actually kind of like the way that it plays now. I think it's a cool field, but it definitely plays very fast and kind of small. San Marcos, I think was still a bit bigger than St. George. And because of the open spaces and things like that, there were still kind of more places you could move in St. George. If you get kicked from a spot and the other team knows what it's doing you're going to be in a world of hurt because mm. you're just not going to have a lot of places unless you know how to reestablish very well to get to a new area. So I, I think they play a bit differently in that sense, but they are both, I mean, one floor, fairly square, um, smaller, faster side arenas. Okay. Well, thank you for the tip. I'll write those down right now. <laughs> yep. um, it's all right. I'm, yeah. reco- I'm recording this. It's all right. Snowflake. So, so you've, you've obviously played tournaments you know pre shoulder rules or you know you 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 you've kind of seen the game you know with the original u.s rules with nothing but pot shots and yeah. you've obviously dark, played the dark times yeah the, the the dark times and, and you've obviously now played played a couple tournaments with you know proper international rules as far as far, far as that goes now Everybody that listens, or most everybody that listens to, to this podcast, kind of knows, you know, my opinion, DK's opinion, and Steve-O's opinion about the rules because we've obviously been doing this pod for longer than we care care to admit at this point. Um, what's your take as somebody who is, you know, on the on the newer end of the pl- pl- newer and younger end of the player spectrum having you know played in both both sandboxes as it were yeah so i absolutely love the the new the international i say new 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 to me new to us uh play style and uh rule set um from 2012 to 20 about 16 ish i played nothing but pop shots and um you know uh cheating (laughs) cheating in the (laughs) the international eyes I played nothing but that, and then transferring over to the, um, you know, show two sensors, uh, a gun and one other. After changing to that, I, my eyes, it was like, oh my gosh, it was like Aladdin. It was like a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was just, um, it was. I, I loved it as someone that isn't as maybe quick. As some of the other players in laser tag, get it, being able to have a chance against someone that can just bring their gun up is you know very quickly and under up, up and down over a wall in a matter of less than a second is uh, it gives a good advantage and or it gives me a player like uh, a player like me a better advantage to the game and more enjoyable. I I like it this way much more just because um it, it it picks up the pace of a game in a sense because at least in Atlantis. Uh, if if you guys remember the arena, it was upstairs primarily is what you fought for. And if uh, mm-hmm. assuming you can kick the other team down, then you most likely won. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was two two it was three platforms, you know, red, yellow, and uh, green upstairs. And it was kind of just poke down the platforms until you can hopefully pop shot the heavy and then go in, and then your commander can get points. But now it's just now I can you you're used to be able to walk into the open with the new set of rules and. Someone has to pop up to shoot you, and if you're a heavy, then you're unless it's another heavy trying to shoot you, then you'll shoot them down no matter what. And it just adds a, almost a faster pace to the game actually, because before everyone was just sitting on each platform waiting for someone to be dumb and pop up, and then you shoot them, and then it's just a big cycle of boring nothingness. <laughs> and then, uh, but I, I I thoroughly enjoy this new new rule set. I think it it's uh it's more it's uh, this is gonna sound weird, but it's almost more official feeling. Like uh, there's more to the game. It's not just uh, running around shooting people. I guess, I guess that is what it is at the end of the day. All right, good answer. We won't cut your mic. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 always you know it's it's always you know interesting to get you know perspectives from you know players that aren't considered in the you know you know old guard of of lasers because I mean the the reality is that. You know, you pretty much know the answer that you're gonna get when you ask certain of us this question. Um, you know, there's like there, there's literally no surprise mm. whatsoever. Um, and so it's you know it's interesting 
to get that perspective of, oh, yeah, you know, I, I started playing like this, and then I got to play like this, and, oh, okay, this is different, and I'm having more fun now. Interesting. It, it, so. I guess it's like, like with anything, right? Like, people kind of fear fear the change, change yeah. So, That's fair. Yeah, if, if you can kind of, if you're open to it, you know, it, it's it can sometimes be a good thing and in this case it most 100 percent absolutely is <laughs> um yeah right on so did you guys want to touch on anything else i just want to play laser tag why won't you let me play laser tag <laughs> hey you had the option ish of coming to west coast it's not my fault that you know california's on fire and pg and e is turning off power left right and center and fucking you out of work and you bought it and you bought a house and decided that that was more important than playing laser tag hey dk yeah, all those if, things went into the ish on the, on that part so that was yeah. a big fat ish if, if i come will you go but, <laughs> that one, uh, that's a big no because i still i just can't get the time off work. Shit. yeah so i call your bluff no i'm like literally on the uh the uh, in New Zealand website as we speak. <laughs> yeah, I know. We talked about this last week. <laughs> you can cancel class. You don't want a FOMO, bro. You don't want a FOMO. Nah, but yeah, don't I worry. Get, I, get I have trouble. my time, my funds set aside, so I will not be missing Auckland. I'll make sure that schedule that out. <laughs> um, Snowflake, did you want to kind of bring anything else up or any any last uh, words? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, as DK said, it is big words to hope that we get a uh, in place. And um, if it doesn't, then uh, it's fine because as long as we don't get last, that's all that matters. <laughs> I, look, I think Miami's we... has something to shoot for, though. Yeah, keep the, the keep the goals high. And any, we will. Anytime you can play like competitive laser tag is usually a good thing. Um, so I mean, Sorry. regardless of what happens, hopefully you guys have a good weekend and get to catch up with some people they haven't seen for a little while and yeah, play some play some competitive good-natured laser tag <laughs> um but i think maybe we'll um we'll wrap it up there but um yeah thanks Snowflake, for coming on and uh get, getting letting us get to know you a little bit <laughs> um, yeah thank you so much for having me no all good all good well um hopefully we see you in auckland if not before then if i if i do manage to fold my, myself into buying a really last minute plane ticket to Utah. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll tell Joe he has to find another team. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. If Steve O's coming, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's playing with me. Like, that's, it's, that's, okay, that's let's, fair, let's, give him, let's give him to the Germans. How about that? <laughs> They're literally fighting over you right now. I love Steve. it. I, I think love this is, it. Uh, this is putting it over the top. Yeah, I'm going to, you. <laughs> I'm going to, um, <laughs> think know. about that, like, after I cut from the podcast, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, buddy. <laughs> all right. Well, look, we'll, we'll leave it there. But, um, uh, yeah, for this week, I've been going next door. I've been very sad. No lasers, DK. <laughs> and I've been fan. Always remember to backtrack, kids. We will see you next week. <laughs>